Hello, I'm Fate. Talk about the girlfriend stuff. Today we're looking at chapter 234 of Rent a Girlfriend. With that said, not much to talk about here except for the fact that this arc is still going and I kind of predicted this somewhat that like this arc is just going to keep going until we get to the date or Reiji might randomly cut it off and just like come back to it later. I think it's really interesting that it's been at the day and the boyfriend this entire time. Without further ado, let's mosey. Chinese hotpot, sure. I'll take a look, thanks. No problem. Oh, he's still at the DVD place. I thought so because this didn't look like a bed. Oh, this is continuing like piece by piece. And I kind of predicted this part too, at least for this particular chapter, uh, specifically because like, uh, if you see the future image Reiji shared on threads, Chizu is still wearing the same clothes. So it makes a lot of sense that we just continue where we left off from last chapter. <laughs> Mizuhara is so cute. <laughs> Oh, we haven't seen one of these in a while. Huh. Shit. There are seven differences in total. See the answers in the next chapter. Oh boy. So I will point out, I think this is really funny. Like this is all on Kazuya's head. So he's just imagining this. <laughs> and it looks really good too, fuck. I like how Ruka's the only one wearing like the same clothes. Whereas like Chizuru, Sumi, We've never seen Sumi in manga, like, actually wear a swimsuit, so Mommy seems to be... No, Mommy's wearing something completely different, too. Okay, so all I'm getting from this is Kazi's very horny. So far, I've only found two. Here's one. Here's two. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. We also have Mommy's hair. That's another one. So now we have five. Oh, six. This, this, there's a line here and there isn't a line here. Damn, okay, bro. The fucking V line. <laughs> he has to point out the V line, goddamn. Oh, and the crab. Wait. One, two, three, four, five. Mommy's hair is different. Six, seven. There's a, there's a neckline missing here. Eight. There's eight differences. What the fuck? That's not fair. That's not fair, bro, unless he's like giving you a freebie or it's a mistake. I'm gonna go with the wild guess and maybe say it's a mistake. We got them all. Let's go. Okay, cool. Moving on from this topic now. <laughs> I, it was bugging me, okay? I was like staring at this for a hot while. I'm like, I gotta know. I gotta know. <laughs> I'm so glad she told me she wanted to eat. Let's see, Chinese hot pot in Tokyo. This takes care of dinner, but a Chinese hot pot? Huh? Is that a favorite of hers? It's possible that she's just in the mood for it. Either way, it's my time to shine. I'll give her the best hot pot ever. Chinese hot pot restaurant. Sashin hot pot main dinner. Mm. Yep. Oh my god. Okay, Reiji. Don't be subtle about it anymore. I understand, good sir. <laughs> Uh, last chapter, first thing I saw with this was uh, yin yang, and I'm just like, oh, okay. And then I thought about it, I'm like, oh, okay, it completely lines up with the theme of the chapter, which is like this element of balance. And then he just has Kazuya scrolling through it so fast, it literally looks like a yin yang. Got it, man. I oh, by the way, the Chinese hot pot, like it has a nickname where it's yin yang hot pot because it's literally like shaped like it. Ugh, uh, so many. I guess that should have been obvious. Searching for Chinese hot pot in Tokyo gives unlimited results. People talk about it a lot lately. I can't just pick the best rated one on the restaurant review site either. Looking up only Chinese hot pot brings up all kinds of them. I want Mizuhara to enjoy it. That's my goal. But which one is she in the mood for? And how are we supposed to eat these? Is it like medicine cooking? It has all kinds of ingredients. Is there a special etiquette for it? Mizuhara's probably eaten this before. What if I'm the only one who doesn't know? I heard that you're supposed to rinse your fingers. <laughs> Kazuya, what are you doing? <laughs> In the white side. Oh my God. See, it's even white and black. Where'd you hear that? <laughs> I'd lose tons of points because the date could be stressful. It'd be such a confusing night out. God. Oh, I don't know anything about this. I don't know anything about Chinese hot pot. How am I supposed to show her a good night out like this? I mean, what if the best one is Hichijo or something? To put it bluntly, I've got a plan before and after. Maybe it's too risky to choose based on the restaurant. Hmm? Chinese hot pot increase your stamina. Chinese hot pots warm me up inside and it kind of gives me the hots too. Women with strong. 
<laughs> what a curveball. What a way to come back to this. Oh my god, woman with strong sex drives. Prefer these the foods the most. Chinese hot pot number one. <laughs> my body feels kinda hot. Capson simulation. <laughs> Hold me. <laughs> this is torture. <laughs> I love the slap. Stop. The middle. Tudor Shun could even be waiting for that. I don't feel like it's possible anymore for me to separate lust from love. He's gonna talk about it. I know it's still too early, but I've never been this close to you. Ever since I first met you two years ago, it's the truth that I want to support you. But I've also had these other thoughts about you every single day, to be honest. <sighs> Is it wrong for me to have these feelings, Mizuhara? <laughs> no! No, I said this in the last chapter. No, you're not a bad person for feeling lust towards the person that you love. You're not a bad person for it. No, don't let anybody fucking tell you that. Not that I hate myself any less for it. I'm sorry, Mizuhara. <laughs> I got the eel we talked about. She's too carefree. They talked about an eel and she got it. Where are you? In Ikebukura. Huh? She's close. Hotel rival DVD booth. Headstone Ichinose Fall. Oh, hurt me more. Hurt me more! So if you guys don't know, uh, there's the um, family headstones, which is meant to represent the entire family. And you go and clean those up and you wash it up and you do all that stuff. Reiji talked about it briefly uh, in chapter 182, I believe, when Kibe tells Kazuya about how Grandma Nagomi would go to the Kinoshita family stone and she would wish Kazuya good luck and she would clean it and take out all the weeds and stuff like that. So this is very much the same thing. It's interesting that she like shows up here after shopping too. Damn. Like, with her fancy clothes and everything, she doesn't care. She's still cleaning. I love this. Like, you don't... There's no dialogue. You kind of get it. She's just here to clean. <laughs> She's struggling. Whew. Oh, my God. That grave is really small. Uh, hey, be quiet. Oh, yeah. It's small because Chizur doesn't have... Um... But, yeah, her family didn't have a lot of money. So the gravestone is naturally small. Damn. It's wonderful that you do this every week. Oh, it's my daily routine. Did Nagomi do it every week or did she do it every month? Give me a minute. I gotta know. Oh, Jesus. Nagomi did it every fucking morning. Oh, jeez. She did it every single morning. Yeah, she would go to the gravestone. Oh my god. Yeah, she did it every morning and she would pray for her family's health. God damn. <sighs> Red bean mochi. I, I, I think I've seen them get that before. Flowers. Clap. <laughs> Look at her face. I'm going on a date with him. <laughs> <laughs> Look at her face! <laughs> oh my Christ! This is really funny. <laughs> Why is this so funny? Oh my god, look at her face, it's so funny. Oh my god. <laughs> she looks so goddamn embarrassed. Like you see this little panel where she like looks up at the grave and she's praying and like it turns from this like oh sad melancholic thing where dialogue is rarely spoken you feel a bit insecure because of like what the little kids said uh someone points out that this is like a daily routine for chizuru and how she does this regularly and then it turns from this thing that's like sad and tragic because it's rooted in loss and grief and then it just turns to this goofy thing which is super fitting because that's kind of how it's supposed to be like grief like a part of it is recognizing that these per this people aren't really gone. Like, they're still here. They touched your heart, and that's what matters. And so, Chizuru <laughs> doing this, being so comedic, so silly, is thematically fitting for, like, the progression of her character and how she's evolved, that she can just do this comfortably after having been told, like, the sad stuff. Also, 
I didn't notice the earrings. They look like those uh, shrine earrings. How interesting. That's that's even more fitting, thematically speaking, because that's, you know, shrine earrings. She's, she's literally cleaning like the gravestone. But I don't think there's anyone out there more suitable for you than Kazuya-kun. <sighs> Honestly, if you're going that far with it, then you could have at least told me why you thought that before you died. It's not fair. See ya. Wind. I love how she turns back, makes that expression, lifts her head again. Don't worry, I can figure it out for myself. God. It's like push from the heavens. Hey, you're okay, you're doing good. Oh my, this chapter is, this chapter is emotional. It's layered. Oh, a table for two? Right this way, please. No shot. Are they recreating the Isekaya arc? They are, aren't they? So, this is what a Chinese hot pot restaurant looks like. Oh my shit, Kazuya. This is my first time here. Oh, really? I'm surprised. There's a glass of water and a towel. Nah, I lied. It's my eighth time. <laughs> That's a lot. No need to save this pick for later. Why even lie about that? I just fibbed for fun. So, what do you want to talk about? Good thing I was free tonight. Oh, um, it's about the date we talked about before. Something's been on my mind. Oh, really? Is it something serious? I didn't notice this until afterwards, but it's actually Minnie who says, Anywho, let's get some drinks for now. And then she's the one who suggests the two highballs. Kazi's the one who agrees, saying, uh, sure, yeah, alright. Then Minnie says, one highball and one matcha mule. And then Kazi's like, that's only one highball, what the fuck? So Minnie's like suggesting all these things and just kind of going at her own pace, doing her own shit not worrying about anything else and this is meant to be an exact contrast to Kazuya. oh and it just ends there so so this image is this one you know it, it makes a lot of sense too that chizuru would be talking to her grandmother yeah that's a uh, pretty thematically fitting all right that's it for this video guys thank you very much for watching uh if you're interested go check out my analysis section that i'm going to be posting as a separate video from this one where i delve into more analysis and symbolism and things along the like so yeah go go check that out if you enjoyed this video please subscribe the like button and the bell icon keep both the uploads all that fun stuff and see you guys later remember let's moosey